Today I'm going to talk to you about something that I personally didn't bother checking out for years. But looking back, I wished I had. Because since I started using back button focus, my photography techniques have changed dramatically. And my focusing success rate on very difficult fast moving subjects has risen beyond belief. So stick around because I'm also going to share with you a killer technique that changed the way I approach wildlife photography, especially whilst photographing small birds. Hi. I'm Ken Hatfield. Welcome to my Better Photography channel. But first, for those who are not familiar with back button focus, a quick explanation. Most modern cameras have the focus and metering attached to the shutter button on the front of the camera. Normally, you would point the camera at the subject, press the shutter button halfway down, and the camera meters, focuses, and you take the shot. However, that means every time you push the shutter button, the camera refocuses, which is okay for single shots, but if you're taking a large group of wildlife images that's constantly changing, you end up making multiple shots, that meaning it has to refocus every single time you push the shutter button, increasing the possibility of accidental camera misfocus. And the result is, you may miss that vital shot, something I've done many times in my wildlife images. Plus, if you want to focus on a certain part of the subject, the focus point you choose may place the subject in the wrong part of the frame. If multiple shots are needed, say at a wedding when family group members are changing whilst in the same location, each time the camera needs to refocus, there is a possibility of focusing mistakes. With back button focus, you separate the focus from the shutter button, leaving just the meat ring and obviously the shutter release control. This means that the shutter button controls the meat ring and the shutter release, and the back button controls the focus. By pressing this button once, the focus is achieved and locked. You can then release your finger and recompose safely as many times as you like, without the risk of focus and mistakes. If the subject starts to move, then you simply repress and hold the back button and the camera will refocus and track any movement. This has been a massive game changer for my wildlife photography, especially for bird images. In fact, I don't know of anyone who has tried back button focus and not stuck with it. With most cameras, the AF on button is usually already factory preset to focus your image, so you can use this button immediately without changing any settings. You will, however, have to disable the autofocus function from your shutter button. Let me show you how to do this if you're using a Canon camera. If you're not a Canon user, you can check out your own model in your instruction manual or look it up on YouTube. Now, in order to set your camera up for back button focus, there's a couple of things you need to do. The first thing you don't need to do is to touch your AF on button, because in the factory that's normally set as a focusing button anyway. So just leave that as it is. But what you'll need to do is dislocate the focusing from your shutter button. So we go to Menu, Custom Controls, and then Set. This brings up the menu for the settings attached to each button on your camera. Now you'll see the highlighted button there is the shutter. You can see the little red glow there and highlighted there to show you what that is. And that is the button that is attached to autofocusing and metering. What you need to do is move that to the center so it only does the metering. So you press set there. Now your shutter button is attached to metering only. If we look down one here, it brings up the autofocus you can see where that's placed on the back of the camera and I can use either of those buttons for focusing and it just tells you there that those two buttons have the focusing applied to them and that means that your back button focus is in place. Okay I think the simplest way to uh, demonstrate this is on camera. So I've done a little setup here, I've got a subject here which I'm going to focus on, it's in the centre focal point there, press back button focus, AF on, brings it into focus. And then the interesting thing is I can just take one finger and just move the camera without touching anything else. As you can see, the subject has stayed perfectly focused. This is something that the paparazzi use a lot if you see them uh, shooting away at celebrities. They'll put the focal point on the eye of the celebrity and then move the camera for a better composition. You must remember actually is that if uh, you have a moving subject, all you have to do then is push back button focus and hold it and the camera will track the subject until the button is released. Simple, easy, very effective. A big favorite of mine. Changed my photography immensely. You should try it. Now, you set up with back button focus in place. I'm gonna show you how to use it to get better wildlife shots. 
and I'm going to share a killer technique that has changed my wildlife photography forever. Let's get into the hide. Okay, so I was going to do the next bit from my portable hide in the garden, but the last two days have been really, really windy. Uh, I've tried to come out, but it was wafting about, and eventually the wind got so strong it split, so I'm having to change the way I'm going to do things. Firstly, I'm going to demonstrate this technique anyway, using a, a different setup, but it's just as effective. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on this branch that I put here. And the idea being it's a nice, interesting branch, and what I've done is I've removed all of the feeders except one and that means that as the birds come in they've really got a cue to take the feed and what they'll do is hopefully is settle on this branch before they go up to the feeder whilst they wait for the other birds to feed. So I'm going to go across to the other side of the garden now and show you the setup I have with my camera which will allow me to take these without disturbing the birds. Ideally from this position here I would have loved to have been able to photograph out of the window. I've used the, the window or the house as a hide basically but I haven't got an angle on my feeder here. I can't do that without having the, the camera pretty much out of the window so I can't see what I'm doing. So what I've done here is I've done my setup here, I've put my camera in a position where it's got a clear view of the feeder and also I've used the back button focus to lock the shot onto the branch that I was mentioning earlier. Um, what you're also going to need for this if you want to, to get out of the, uh, the picture and to make sure that you don't disturb the birds is that you need a remote shutter. This is a cable remote uh, you can buy very cheaply anywhere. Uh, I actually got an electronic remote here so I can go into the house now and I can watch from the window and actually take photographs remotely because it's locked on that branch. Anything comes on that branch I'm going to get it. So here I am inside my home. Uh, as you can see, the angle of the window is very acute. So this is an impossible shot, just poking the camera out of the window. So what I've done, set it up outside, it's pointed at that branch, it's locked on the branch. Now with the advantage you've got here, and this is the killer technique that I was told by a friend of mine in Texas when we were in the hides in Texas doing the, uh, the beautiful Texas uh, birds. He was sitting in the hide and we set up and we're peering through our lenses, checking and making rechecking, making sure that we've got everything in focus and ready to go. And he's sitting splayed back, almost feet up on the, on the, the edge of the, of the decking area. And he sat with a remote in his fingers and he was just kind of looking out and then every now and then he'd press it, the shutter would go. And I asked, I said, what are you doing? And he said, look, he says, you're doing loads of work here. You're sitting peering through the viewfinder. You don't have to do that. If you use back button focus, you focus on the branch that you want to intend to, to photograph the birds perching on. And you've got to use your head here. Use logic. Look where the birds are coming down and then choose a branch and stick with it. Because the birds will come back time and time again. It's a great opportunity because you'll know where the birds are. You've got an idea. And what a great advantage for a wildlife photographer, a bird photographer, if you're going to know where the bird's going to be at any one time. This allows you to do that. So you, know, you wait, you look at the, the, the perch, see where the, the bird is landing time and time again. And you don't have to look through a viewfinder. You can just watch. And what's great is, from your peripheral vision, you can actually see it coming in much more quickly rather than through a little tiny viewfinder. You get to see the scene much more quickly. If you see it quickly, you can capture it quickly. And the key thing also to do is to start the shutter going long before the bird reaches the perch and long after it leaves the perch. And that's how you get better flight shots. Most of us, and I'm guilty as anyone, of releasing the shutter far too soon. And I miss... The great shots, I get a half a shot as a taking off and then I've missed the one where it's actually establishing flights and you get some really good shots. So uh, to recap, you set the perch up, you set your camera up, you put the uh, back button focus on the perch that you're going to concentrate on, you use a remote shutter, you come in, you get yourself a cup of tea, a slice of toast and you just stand here and you watch. And when something comes along, you just do that and you've got your shot. Got to be better than sitting Hearing breaking your neck looking through the back of your viewfinder. I do suggest you try it. It's a really, really good way to get better bird photography. See you next time in the Better Photography Channel.